Good morning everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. So it's really early in the morning, it's about six o'clock. Um, I'm out in the free stall right now. You can see the bull and a couple heifers out here. The cows are all inside. A few of you guys did ask if we've been letting the girls out at night or leaving them in at night. And right now we have been leaving them in at night instead of letting them back outside. But that is just because we wanted to put chips in the free stall, like I said in the last video before they went out because we didn't really want them to lay in the free stall because the stalls are kind of low and it can be hard for an older cow to get up when the stalls are low like that. So we didn't really want to encourage them laying in the free stall at all. So we had been leaving them side at night because obviously they sleep at night much more than they would during the day. So they had been staying inside at night, long story short. So that brings us to what we're going to be doing today. So you can see that the sawdust truck is backed up to the front of the um, free stall entrance here. And it's got a nice big load of sawdust chips in it. So, yay, we're finally going to be putting chips in the stalls. Super excited to see the girls' reaction to this. We are going to be getting a late start milking just because we have a million things that we want to do today. And we really wanted to get these stalls chipped before the girls get out because we didn't want to leave them in today because it's supposed to be about 70 degrees today. It's supposed to be absolutely beautiful. So we didn't want to leave them in, so we want to do this before we let them out in the morning. So milking them a little bit later, they're going to have to deal with it. It's about 6 o'clock right now. I don't know if I already said that. I probably already said that. So Brent just took the skid steer and he went down to get a load of dirt because we have this one stall here that the bull was kind enough to completely dig out because he apparently is bored and has nothing else to do. So Brent is going down to get a load of dirt from the bunk silo down there where the DOT brought in a bunch of dirt. He's just going to go get a couple buckets of that, dump that in there and pack it in and then we'll put mm. chips on top of it. And hopefully the cows will be none the wiser and finally leave that stall alone. If you guys have watched any of these previous videos, um, you probably saw we filled it with sawdust one time, which was not a great idea because it kind of just drew attention to it. And then we had one cow that just spent the entire day just completely ripping it out of it last fall. So, um, definitely going to be filling it with dirt this time. So you can see the girls are eating. It's nice and cheery in the barn this morning. Very sunny. I'm just waiting for Brent to bring up that dirt because I'm supposed to let him in right here because he cannot get around over here anymore. I'll show you guys. He just tips the bed up where it is right now um, and then he'll take a bucket and it'll continuously just fall out as he keeps taking buckets and it works really good. So yeah, we got a nice big load rounded right over. Um, this is the pad. We haven't cleaned it since we cleaned it the first time so they've really not made a mess of it at all. I'm really shocked. They must be spending 90% of their time in the freestyle, which is odd because um, I would rather be outside if I had the option, but apparently they wouldn't. Um, so yeah, you can see the sawdust truck is wedged right in there. There's like a foot between the wall over here, and then there's like, I don't know, quite a bit of room right here, but only like three feet right there, three or four feet right there. So it's pretty tight to get backed in here, but um, works pretty good. So yeah. I hear Brent coming, so I'm not doing my job here. They're gonna be messing with that now. That stuff is heavy as all get out. It's basically just sand. Brent is down there running the cleaner. You can see, just wait for you guys. We do have to do one other thing before we start milking, which is kind of exciting. Um, I've been waiting a long time to show you guys this. I'm not sure why I'm so excited about it because it's not really that exciting, but it's exciting to me because we've been wanting one for a long time. So I'll take you guys out and show you. I don't really see the purpose of that coupling. Me either. I don't understand. Okay, so I guess I am going to sit and watch the cleaner just to make sure that it goes okay. 
We did have trouble with it breaking again the other day, but there was too much manure in it. We didn't run it out because um, the cows had left and we didn't run it and then they came back in and we tried to run it then and that was a really bad decision. It had too much crap in it for an old chain and it broke so we fixed it again and it's running fine now as long as we make sure to run it at the right time instead of waiting because procrastination never works on a farm. Um, so we're running that right now. I'm just sitting here making sure that it doesn't break. We have had trouble with a part on the shaft in there slipping down and you do have to watch for that as well. If it starts to slip, you have to shut the pump off and go in and hit it up with a hammer. And we are gonna be fixing that today as well. So stay tuned because it's gonna be an extremely busy day on the farm. Okay, so I am super excited to show you guys this. Make sure I don't get hit by a vehicle walking across the road. Okay, so here is our new purchase. Um, Brent picked this up yesterday. Uh, he actually traded a couple calves for it, so we've been wanting an extra rake for a really, really long time. Just because it would be so much easier um, to get things done, it takes a long time for Brent to rake one field by himself. Usually we rake three passes into one side to make a windrow, so he would go around once, kick it in, go around the same direction, kick it in, and then turn around and kick it in into a windrow. So it takes him a long time with the one rake that we do have to do that, so he picked up this one really cheap and it's really good condition really heavy duty and it's just going to be really nice to have that so we can both be raking at the same time and we can get a field done like that so yeah obviously it's a john deere you can see i think this is the only piece of john deere equipment he owns um some of you guys said you can tell we're not very fussy about equipment because we just have everything i mean we have an international a massey a coon two coons actually a new holland spreader um, Kubota, loader, just definitely not fussy about stuff. All the tines on it are really good. Um, there are a couple that are bent, but none missing that I can see, so that's great. You can see that one down there is bent. Um, and the guy said he used it last year. There are a couple issues with it that we're going to be fixing. So we're going to be taking it to um, the guy that we have do our welding for us. We're going to be taking it to him this morning before we milk the girls because we want him to um, be able to get right into it. He's amazing. He does a really good job welding. He's he can weld anything. He can make it up. He can he can just weld anything. Like if you don't have a part, he could just manufacture it. He's really good. Always comes right over and does stuff for us. He's just really really nice. Another really great thing to have when you work on a farm is um, a really good welder. Brent can weld, but not like he always says he can't do it good, but he can do it really good. He just doesn't really have the patience. Um, he's coming right over so he can explain what's wrong with it to you guys because he's taking a good look at it. Um, so yeah, it's pretty big. It's about eight feet. It's one of the bigger models for a side discharge rake. So yeah. Got a new rake. Mm -hmm. Only 60 years old. <laughs> new to us. Had a baron that was going here. Original bearing too, John Deere, I mean, uh, original. Still had the sticker on it. <laughs> it did, really. I know, I saw it. And then we got this piece I had, we're gonna weld in here. Got good tires on it, too. Yeah, the tires are okay. This one's a little wet of crack, but yeah. I want to try it. That one's tubeless, and this one's got a tube in it. But, they're round. Okay, let's take this down to the shot. Okay. Just got back from dropping off the rake. Now it's time to milk the girls. But before we did that, I did want to show you guys the new arrival that we have. Obviously, we still have April. She's right here. We had to put a collar right here so she wouldn't jump through the cage because she kept escaping in that pen. So we're going to have to fix the gate on that and put the gate out here before we can put her back in there. So right now, this is just temporary to keep her from jumping out because she's crazy. Um, and then here's our newest arrival. She is the cutest baby I have probably ever seen. She is just beautiful. Beautiful markings, beautiful chocolatey color. Um, she's a Holstein Jersey Normandy cross. She's got a very dairy body. Um, just a real cutie. Her name is Coco, little Coco Bean. I think she's the cutest thing ever. I haven't fed them yet. You guys can probably tell by the way they're dancing around. Their food is almost ready, so I'm gonna probably feed them while we're milking. So yes, we're gonna milk the girls and then we can get into the rest of our day. Um, Brent is already out back putting the chips in the stalls. I'm just about to head out there. I gotta finish up in the milk room first, get that wash going, and then later I'll come down and shut it off. But um, Brent's got a rake for me. Uh, we already did hoe out the stalls out back, by the way, and that's why he's out there bedding them. 
but I've got a rake here that I'm gonna use to rake back some of those chips just to level them off a little bit. And then the plan is to let the girls um, tread that down and pack it down real good by laying on it before we put any sawdust on it, which we'll probably do tomorrow because they'll have it packed down pretty good by then. Cause hopefully after we let them out, I can get a good shot of a couple of them laying in the stalls for you guys. stalls short so you guys can see they were really really low they're pretty high now honestly maybe a little bit too high the girls will pack it down quite a lot so it probably will look pretty normal after um, but I think it looks really really nice it's great to see it bedded really good and these guys are excited to try it because they keep trying to get in a stall <laughs> It's actually pretty great. Totally slipper. Boom! Just like that, we're all done. I think it looks great. I'm so excited to see the girls' reaction to this. Brent is just taking one pass down through um, to move the poop that got hoed out of the stalls. It's just in case they pull some of that, those chips out, he can just scoop it right up and put it back in because there won't be any crap there um, to scoop up or anything. Really, really nice. It hasn't looked this good in a long time. You guys can see that we have a few stall loops that we do need to put back up. The girls get a little hard on them. This one needs to be screwed back into that coupling and lifted up. And there's one over there that has to be fixed as well. taking them a second crop bailout back. I want to show you guys these are two of Brent's saws that he was using the other day. I was using this steel right here. I'm not sure what model it is. A MS250. And this one, this is a 445 Husqvarna. He was using that one. That one, I don't really like that one. I like this one better. Uh, 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 
So Brent just left to pick up that other load of chips. You can see, yeah, I've got the barn all hoed out and the stalls bedded. It's looking nice and fresh and ready for the girls to come in at night. It's been about an hour since we let the girls out, so I'm gonna go check on them in a while and see if they're using the stalls at all um, and hope they aren't just pulling it out or doing something dumb that they shouldn't be doing. Leah is in here eating some nice second crop feed. I took some off that bale that Brent took out back for her. She's also eating a little bit of cornmeal because I gave her a little bit of extra cornmeal. Shh, don't tell anybody. I technically just told him myself, so. Brent did give me a few jobs that he wanted me to do while he was gone. Um, so there is a board right here. You can see how we have the connecting boards here. There is one missing right here, and there's also one down at the other end, down by where we parked the skid steer. That is, half of it has fallen off, so I need to put some screws in those. So I've got the drill and the screw gun right up here. I only have like four long screws left, so we're gonna have to make that do. The board for this one over here is right here next to April. Hopefully you don't get up just because I'm trying to grab the board. Okay, April. Two boards are up, it looks much better. Plus the girls can't go in between from stall to stall without going outside now. Cause that was kind of annoying when they would just like walk right through the middle there. So at least they can't do that now. Um, other thing I was supposed to do is the milk truck did come while we were out back putting the chips in unfortunately. So um, I'm going to rinse out the tank. So now I believe after Brent comes back with those chips, the only thing that we have left to do is we have been having trouble with the barn cleaner. I'll plug the light in so I can actually see. There, that's better. Okay, so like I was saying, we've been having some trouble with the barn cleaner head. So, so on this first chain here, this gear right here is on a shaft and the shaft keeps sliding down, which will make this chain fall off, which then just means that nothing is moving at all. Because obviously, if you're missing one chain in a reducer system, it's not going to work at all. Then we have to shut down everything and come in and put that back on, um, hammer this gear up, tighten it in again. For some reason, the set screw just aren't keeping it up where it's supposed to be, no matter how much you tighten them. So Brent had an idea of just drilling a hole through here, and we're going to put a hollow pin in there just to keep that up because it's fine where it is. Um, as long as it stays right there, it doesn't need to move at all. And if it did, you could just take the pin right out. So I drilled the hole and he's going to pick up a pin when he comes back. And then hopefully we won't have that problem again. And just take a quick peek at the girls and see if any of them are laying in those stalls. And see if any of them are using them at all. So the only one actually using these stalls is Jules. She is the only one in these stalls on this side. Everybody else is on the other side. So I should have totally expected, but they're completely avoiding this side, so hopefully they get used to it pretty soon and they start using it because I think it'll be really a lot better for them to lay on some nice even ground than laying in a ditch, basically. Um, so hopefully they'll start using that soon. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe, comment down below, and hit that notification bell so you know when any new videos are being posted. Keep it real, keep farming, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.